Next up, let's move on to what's going on with the birth rates and uh, paying attention to this. Uh, I'll answer some more questions when we get past this. Uh, let's take a look at what's going on here. And it says U.S. Birth, uh, births last year fell to the lowest since 1979. Where's the baby? Check out that cool baby in the stroller. I had to put that picture there because that baby right there uh, is wearing pink. So I'm pretty sure it's a female. It has a bow on her head. And although it's 2024. Who knows what the parents are doing now? We'll say it's a she, though. She is styling. She's got it going on. Hopefully, you guys can see that baby, though. <laughs> but she's just, she's like, yeah, yeah, I got it going on. That's right. <laughs> With their shades. It's awesome. Um, okay, let's get in this. It says US birth, U.S. birth rates declined in 2023 to the lowest level in more than 40 years, continuing a two-decade trend of Americans having fewer children. Now, there's a lot of reasons to this. Um, kind of like when we talk about with 2020, some people say it was for this reason. Some people say it was for that reason. I think it's for multiple reasons. And so when it comes to the birth rate falling, I think there's multiple reasons. Some reasons we can't talk about on YouTube um, and some that we can. We'll talk about uh, talk about one of them here. But I believe that there's multiple reasons uh, for this. So this total births for the year fell 2% to 3.59 million. According to preliminary data released Thursday from the U.S. National Center for Health Statistics, a level not seen since 1979, when about 3.4 million U.S. babies were born. The rate of U.S. women of childbearing age having babies is the lowest since the center began compiling statistics, yada, yada, yada. Birth rates in countries around the world have been declining, mainly in wealthier nations, as economic instability and uncertainty over events like the pandemic discord. discord wow discourage there we go people from having children economic instability is definitely one of them um events like what happened in 2020 for reasons we can't discuss have absolutely forced people into not being able to and that's as far as i can go i'm sure you guys are catching my drift when it comes to that so there are a couple of reasons why right there Birth rates in countries around the world have been declining, da, 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 while countries including France and China have, uh, have taken measures to try and encourage couples to have children. U.S. birth rates have been stifled by the forces uh, uh, like lack of paid family leave, skyrocketing health costs. I don't disagree with that. It's absolutely ridiculous, the monopoly um, that is the U.S. medical system. Uh, it says young U.S. adults are making conscious decisions about family planning and want to wait for when they can financially support themselves and the child. Yeah, I agree with that as well, uh, according to Karen Guzzo. Uh, her research shows that Americans cite economic strains. Yep. Work instability. Yep. Political polarization. OK. Student loans. OK. Access to health care. I would say more the cost of it, but I guess that falls in, into access. Uh, <laughs> and then there's climate change, climate change. Yes, they, they list climate change as a reason for people not wanting to have kids. Hmm. Propaganda. Just wait. The biggest propaganda is coming up on this on this next one. It says the data uh, data indicates that unplanned pregnancies have also fallen. The author said teen birth rates fell by 2% from the year earlier. I think that's a good thing. Personally, teens should should not be having kids, in my opinion, um, capping a 68% decline from 2017 levels. The birth rate for women ages 20 to 24 declined by nearly half since 20, uh, 2007, reaching a record low of 55.4 births per 1,000 Women peak birth rates uh, have shifted to women in their 30s and 40s, but those rates declined in 2023 from the year earlier. Hispanic women were the rare group that saw more births when a with a one percent gain. Here we go. Get ready. The total birth rate has remained below the level of replacement since 2007, meaning the U.S. depends on immigration to sustain current population levels. You guys catch that? The U.S. depends on immigration to keep the population levels high. Hmm. That's fascinating. I think that's absolutely fascinating. It just goes on to show how 
they're trying to warp something in the direction of, oh, what we see going on at the border is great. Is in order for the U.S. population to remain strong, we got to depend upon the immigration to do so. And so they're swinging it. Of course, you got climate change and then you've got the uh, immigration stuff. So you can clearly see the pop, uh, the propaganda being in place. But yeah, when it comes to birth rates, obviously there's the economic issue, the what's going on with that. The cost of healthcare is ridiculous. I don't even trust doctors anyways, even if I can afford to go there. I don't, I'm not going to, um, <laughs> cause I don't trust any of them. Not a single one of them. I'd rather go to a vet before I go to a doctor, honestly. Um, drugs, like 2020 drugs, as well as food, soy and everything, as we know, has a an effect. We'll just say an effect on reproduction abilities of both men, men and women. I can't go much further than that. I'm sure you guys catch my drift. Uh, some other things that we should know about when it comes to this feminism, the feministic movement, the feminism movement. This is part of the mystery religion, divine feminine and everything. This has a play with it, too. I don't know about you guys, but I constantly see videos and comments and, and uh, posts from these people um, where they're just these women where it's just, I mean, just the, it's just unbelievable. You see them, you know, basically selling themselves with how they, how they dress saying that you shouldn't be looking at me that way. And then attacking men where you need to have um, no joke. Some of them say you need to bring in a hundred thousand to five hundred thousand dollars a year, and you need to have this car, and you need to have this type of house in order for them to even look at you and stuff. It's just that feminist feminism movement is going in that direction. In the fact that there's, it's almost impossible to find anybody to actually be with both men and women. Uh, the the indoctrination of my generation. I'm talking about my generation. Um, is just it's gone full blown when it comes to not only the the intelligence level but the fact of you know not even just denying jesus but actually just living their lives blaspheming him um in any type of way that they can living for themselves not giving a rip about anybody or their principles or anything like that i again i see people my generation that treat you know older people in in just absolute disrespect no care or anything like that just as they treat their own people, their people, their own age and stuff. So it's just, yeah, trying to find anybody to be with. And that causes issues when it comes to having uh, kids. So there's a drop in the birth rate as well as the alphabet agenda. Uh, it's now become trendy to be some type of other gen created gender that doesn't actually exist, but it's become the trend. And that's also causing issues uh, with the birth rate as well. But it also plays into the agenda of AI. Uh, the AI machine takeover. And they've talked about how this is such a benefit when it comes to this. And if you don't, don't believe me, let's hear it from none other than Larry Fink, head dude at BlackRock, of course. Let's hear what he has to say about this. I could argue in the developed countries, the big winners are countries that have shrinking populations. Okay, that's something that most people never talked about. You know, we always used to think shrinking population is a, is a cause uh, for negative growth. But in my conversations with the leadership of these large developed countries that have <clears throat> xenophobic in immigration policies, they don't allow anybody to come in, shrinking unemployment, excuse me, shrinking uh, demographics, <clears throat> these countries will rapidly develop robotics and, tech and AI and technology and, and if the promise, I didn't say it's going to happen, but if the promise of all that transforms productivity, which most of us think it will, we'll be able to elevate the standard of living of countries and the standard of living of individuals, even with shrinking populations. And so the paradigm of negative population growth is going to be changing. And the social problems that one will have in substituting humans for machines is going to be far easier in those countries that have declining populations. Wow. I just love how he can sit there with just a smiling face and go, it's so beneficial for our AI machine takeover agenda when the birth rates are falling. 
almost as in that's part of their agenda as well. Again, I can't go much further than that. Uh, but keep in mind, there was some type of report put out about, what was it, a little over 10 years ago? Was it 2011, I think? It was put out 2011. Some type of report. Again, I can't even say the name of it. Uh, trust me, I can't. Uh, but it said by next year, there's going to be quite a few Western countries that have a significant uh, drop. Now, is that going to be true or not? Nobody knows, but I just think it's kind of interesting, especially since uh, other people in the elite group are talking about how it's such a popular thing and how it benefits them uh, and all this stuff. I can't go much further than that. I may have already said too much. Hopefully not. But again, that was Larry Fink. Uh, it was at the April's uh, WEF special meeting. So this was just last month, uh, where Fink here was speaking at a panel called Investing Amid Global Fracture. And he promotes the cabal's agenda by saying shrinking population will be the big winners. Why? Because replacing humans with AI uh, will increase the productivity and quality of life. And so with less people to replace, that means it's an easier transition into the AI, which means it's a better quality of life. So again, reducing the numbers benefits them. So don't put it past them to do things to help push in that direction. Again, that's all I'm going to say. Remember, you are the carbon that they want to reduce. That's